actually we will read another sutra uh, from the third section from the book of five Anguttara Nikaya numerical discourses Sutta 223 reciting too long the other day is uh, lengthy wandering this is reciting too long <laughs> because there are these five dangers in residing too long in the same place. What five? One comes to own and accumulate many goods. Two, one comes to own and ac accumulate many medicines. Three, one takes on many tasks and duties and becomes competent in the various things to be done. One form, no four, one form bonds with householders and monastics in an unsuitable way, typical of lay people. And five, when one departs from that monastery, one departs full of concern. These are the five dangers in residing too long. So similar to the other suttas, the front part talk about the danger, then the second part talk about benefits. Because there are these five benefits in residing for a balanced period. Part five. One does not come to own and accumulate many goods. Number two, one does not come to own and accumulate many medicines. Number three, one does not take on many tasks and duties and become competent in the various things to be done. Number four, one does not form bonds with householders and monastics in an unsuitable way, typical of lay people. And number five, when one departs from that monastery, one departs without concern. These are the five benefits in residing for a balanced period. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I've mentioned before, I think yesterday also mentioned, uh, in the Buddha's time, they would move from places to places. Huh? Oh, I think they, these days have to go off quite early. Huh? Okay, she's gone. So um, they would move from places to places. Yeah, uh, They would stay for a certain duration. So not too long, not too short. Uh, too short, you keep moving around. Too long, you start to, you know, Chinese say, <laughs> uh, you start to grow roots. Huh? Mm. So what are the five dangers? The first two is something that we should be quite familiar with. One comes to own and accumulate many goods. And then the number two is many medicines. Yeah, basically things, yeah, things. Over here, it didn't uh, specifically go into things like uh, ropes or anything, yeah? uh, but I suppose it will be included in number one. Yeah. So, uh, is this true for you as well? True. Huh? <laughs> if you stay at a place for a long time, then when you move, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it occurred to me our existence on earth uh, is spent yes accumulating things. Yeah, accumulating things. So in many ways, we are similar to the single cell molecule living organism, you know. Yeah. You know? The living organism, the smallest one, yeah single cell, then they evolve and then become multi-cell <laughs> attached to each other. <laughs> they bond with each other. <laughs> yeah. So now so we are uh, read somewhere we are like trillion cells. Uh, trillion cell living organism. Then this trillion cell not enough. We accumulate other things. Yeah. So uh, as as you all may know, those who move around uh, because uh, because the, the the place of lodging often is like around two years. Uh, 
So some of you have concern. Ah, yeah, Sifu, very poor thing. I have to move, keep moving here, moving there. <laughs> this is, this is, ah, huh? it's good according to the sutta. This is good. Um, it's here moving around. You can harder for you to accumulate things. <laughs> I I heard. Um, no, I heard. Uh, uh, in the monastery, it is a common practice that the the monks uh, would move around in the different rooms. Yeah. Uh, uh, sometimes not because the monks want, uh, but because the the. Uh, I I want to use the word abbot, but because in some places it's the person may not be called an abbot, but basically whoever is in charge of the whole place, uh, in terms of the spiritual practice, yeah, may sometimes on a yearly basis, yeah, okay, uh, okay, this year you move to this room, that you go to, this. <laughs> yeah, mm. so, uh, today is Monday. Uh, two days ago, yeah. Uh. Do you all know that this is the Buddhist film festival now yeah, in Singapore? Tasks have I seen? I posted on my Facebook. Yeah. So the other day I, I watched this uh this kind of like a documentary, like a memorial for Venerable Shen Yan. Yeah, I think it was it should have been done by uh Hao Pu San huh? Dhamma Drum Mountain. Yeah. So there was one scene, he moved to a, a, a monastery under Tong Chu Lao Ho Sang. I think it was Tong, Tong Chu Lao Ho Sang, right? Then he, Tong Chu Lao Ho Sang, when he moved in, then he come and say, Ah, your books have a lot of books. You have a books. You better move to a bigger room, huh? better for you. So here, ah, si, si fu. Then he moved over. After you move over, you come over. You just came to the house, 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 they move back and forth four, four five times. I think better. So who is what you do? Then how come teacher? How come you uh, you do this to me? Uh? Then the teacher, I think the teacher was holding a stick. Right? You come here to be a monk or what? Uh, I can't remember. What was it? Ask him to let go of his uh, attachments. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> But in the in the uh, that part was done with an animation because it's impossible that when it happened they actually have a camera <laughs> so they they I think they use actual actors but they um, cartoonize it yeah they cartoonize it animate it in a way um, and in the animation it shows uh Sun Yan Fasi just carrying a suitcase. Moving her over. Yeah. Can I imagine if if, my, if I go to a place and they make me do that, uh, all the books, the two books, uh, move them over. Uh, that, uh, yeah, you all should go and watch that. Yeah, it's very touching. I cried a few times <laughs> during the show. Uh, but yes. We have a tendency to become attached to things, yeah, and then accumulate. Yeah. The worst is accumulating dharma books, because if it's material things, worldly things, it's easy to say, ah, this is worldly. This is something that I should let go. You know, I shouldn't be attached. But dharma books, then how dharma what? <laughs> then <laughs> you know. So the worst is accumulate dharma books. Yeah, you should you should you should learn dharma, not accumulate dharma books. <laughs> but but for most people, this is not a problem. Because most people don't even 
want to accumulate Dharma books. Yeah, until you are accumulating Dharma books, then you must let go of Dharma books. Before you accumulate Dharma books, don't come and tell, tell me, oh, Sufu, I practice non-accumulation. <laughs> huh? yeah, haven't even learned Dharma, tell people, I don't accumulate Dharma books. <laughs> Uh, number three is a bit interesting. Uh, let, let's look at number four and five first. Number four, uh, one forms bonds with householders and monastics in an unsuitable way, typical of lay people. What is typical of lay people? Yeah, the kind of bonds. So, so this is to say that there are different kind of bonds, right? Yeah. There's the bond that is typical of lay people, and then there are bonds between people that is not like the typical lay people. Because if you look at the various suttas, you can see that there is a certain bond between uh, the various monks. They care for each other. They care for each other's well-being. You know, yeah. Like Venerable Nanda is rather close with Venerable Sariputta. Yeah, because Venerable Sariputta is kind of like his his mentor. In many ways, yeah. So you see, in various suttas, uh, they would care for each other, yeah. But then, in that case, how is it different from that of a typical lay person, yeah, or that that which is typical of lay people, yeah, which is that attachment, possessiveness, yeah. After you associate a while, this is my somebody, <laughs> uh, and then you start to want to detect how the person look, how the person is, how the person speak, how the person everything, yeah, out of concern for that person. <laughs> uh, yeah, we start to do that. Mm. Attachment start to sink in. Interesting thing here is that this uh, this is with reference to householders and monastics. So it doesn't mean monastics would definitely be okay. Huh? So just now I mentioned the two types. One which is typical of lay people, one which is not typical of lay people. Doesn't mean that monastics and monastics will not form attachment. Huh? Or can form attachment also. Attachment doesn't mean it's romantic. Huh? It just means that become very um, you know, stuck with each other. For later the this this monk want to go for a feel very uh, or sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes it's not so complicated. It's very simple. Sometimes it becomes like, you know, in school, last time in, in primary school, I don't know about secondary school, but primary school, I think it's more obvious because primary school kids, kids are very direct in that, the way they feel, you see. Yeah. So let's say two person, good friend. Yeah, very good friend. Then one day after class, uh, Recess ring. Then you look. Then the the, the friend look up. Hey, go to tuck shop. Hey, how come? Where's my friend? Ah? usually we go to canteen together, ma. We go to tuck shop. Eat eat long meal together, ma. Then after that you see. Hey, oh, how come my friend is eating long meal with another friend? <laughs> huh? Every day we eat long meal together. How can you eat long meal with your with another person? <laughs> I mean, small kids, they have no concept of, I mean, you, nowadays hard to say also. Huh? Uh, but it's, I'm talking about the platonic attachment, you know. Uh, so among monastics, it can also happen. Hey, why do you go to that place? You know, go to that place? How come you go and help out in the, the puja over there? Huh? You're supposed to help, help me out. Uh, how can you go and help that side? <laughs> uh, can you know? It's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Huh? Uh, I, I saw on Facebook. Huh? How come you go and give talks over there? <laughs> uh, you know that they have lunch gathering, huh? lunch offering. How come I never invite me? <laughs> uh, I have such a problem. Yeah, it boils down to what? If your mind don't connect with the Dharma, then they have all this problem. Yeah, but the catalyst is, the supporting condition is, you stay in a place for too long. Mm. Number five, when one departs from that monastery, one departs full of concern. Uh, because 
you have so many friends, so many relatives over there, yeah, and you are involved in so many things, you know, so many things that you have done there, number three, yeah, your duties, tasks, or everything you do. Then when you leave, then you are more concerned, yeah, now how are uh, that place like this, like that, uh, like this, like that. Uh. Uh, so you will have this, when you leave a place, you're physically not there really, but your heart is there. So imagine you move, after many years, you move to a few places, then your heart is all over the world. Uh. <laughs> then how, how to be at peace? Hmm. Number three, one takes on many tasks and duties and becomes competent in the various things to be done. Now this, I leave this for last because this would, if you read on the surface, it seems a bit weird. Huh? What's wrong with doing, being competent? You mean Buddhists are not supposed to be competent? <laughs> uh, so you must know that the Buddha's instructions to the Shravaka disciple, to the monastics, is very specific. Your sole purpose and aim in life is to attain enlightenment. All other duties is secondary. Yeah, so in the in the text it, it has this phrase Sao Li Sao Si Sao Fang Bian. Yeah. Yeah, so Sao Li Sao Si Sao Fang Bian. So uh, to 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 not strive for a lot of material support. Just minimum. Yeah. Sao Li. Then Sao Si little things, little matters to attend to. Sao Fang Bian. The Fang Bian here is not convenience, uh, it's uh, the things to do to accomplish number two. Yeah, three is number to accomplish number two. Yeah. So monks, your your effort should be directed towards the cultivation, including nuns. Uh, don't spend your time on all the supplant other things. Uh, yeah. So if you become competent, that <laughs> means you do so much. Uh, you should be competent in sila, samadhi, panya, not on doing things. Yeah. So in the Buddha's time, my teacher said, and we can see in the Nikayas also, who, who are the ones who actually are tasked to, to take on duties? Initially, it was only the Arahants. Yeah, only Arahants are tasked to go and give teachings. And you know, before that, you, you have no other duties, just do practices. But over time, I think this changed. Uh, yeah. Because over time spread throughout India, and then there are many other monks, so you have to have someone to, you know, uh, take care of matters. And of course, over the centuries, then, uh, as my teacher said, uh, when we are newly ordained, nowadays, oh, quick, go and do things. Yao pay fu. You must go and accumulate merit, yeah, serve the community. Wow. So end up, spend the youth, uh, 20, 20, 20 years old, 30 years old, up to 40 years old, wow, doing a lot of things, do, 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 do. until 50 plus 60, then want to practice. By then, oh, already. Uh, meditate. Oh, yeah, yao swan pei tong. So my teacher always tells us, while you are young, do your practice. Uh, don't worry about all other matters. Yeah, don't worry about money, don't worry about uh, the duties, uh, we tell, all those things, don't, don't concern yourself with it. Just go and do your practice. Mm. Yeah, number five, number five is uh, quite interesting for me because <laughs> as my mom would put it, you see a bow <laughs> Yeah. In a way, yes. Uh, so it's not that I'm a good cultivator, it's that I, 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 I am even last time I'm like that. <laughs> so when I move from a place to places, right, I don't call people up and say, hey, how, how's things going now? Huh? <laughs> I, in my whole life, I've never done that before. You know? Can you imagine that? <laughs> yeah. Even last time when I moved from one workplace to another workplace, um, I Oftentimes, it's my ex-colleagues who keep in touch with me, and then more, more out of like courtesy, you know. Then I ask, also oh, how's how's everything?" Yeah, but I don't go and ask, "Hey, how's that project? Uh, the one that I was doing, how is it now?" <laughs> but I tell you all a side joke. Then we wrap up. Uh, eight o'clock already. 
when I came back for a short trip after I ordained, then I met my colleagues in consulting for breakfast. Then <laughs> it was so funny because one of the consultants came down and said, Hey, can I? Is it okay if I ask you something? Then I'm like, Yes. I said, uh, about the Singtel, uh, the, the media project, uh, the encryption part, that module, why is the flag? <laughs> then I was like, uh, if I don't recall wrongly, that was about that was about half a year after I ordained, you know, maybe about nine months already. Then he asked me, then I told him, I said, oh yeah, yeah, okay, let me go and check. Then the managing consultant looked at it and he said, wow, oh, this is nat National Geographic moment, man. This is how... All the consultants solve their problem. Go and ask monks for solution. <laughs> so funny, yeah. But I, I, uh, I don't be mistaken. Uh, it's not that I'm, I'm a cultivator or what. Uh, I just, <laughs> and it's not that I, I don't care about people. Um, but when I move from one place to another place, it, it's just not my habit. You no, know, to go and call and then. Uh, yeah. But I think people will feel like, well, oh, this person, uh, no gratitude, move out, uh, then don't, don't call, call us. No. Never even one call and then ask us how we are. But I'm not there really. I call you, then, then how, what can I do, right? Unless I'm going back to help out. Then I call, then you, good, good also like that. Don't, not good also like that. Then call for what? I don't know. But for lay people, you have to stay at a place. Do you prefer to move around or stay at a place for a long time? Mm, hard to say, huh? Mm. Uh, there are two, two, place, two things of moving. One is your place of residence. One is your workplace. Yeah? Uh, if you're, in both cases, I think, if it's comfort comfortable, I think most people want to stay for a longer time. If your workplace, it, the compensation is suitable, yeah? uh, the colleagues are nice, the work is manageable, your boss is also nice, your clients are also nice, and so on and so forth, then you, you, you don't even, the, the question of leaving don't even come up here, you know, right? But does it mean that you can stay forever? No. <clears throat> yeah. The moment you you feel very secure, then suddenly it cannot retrench. <laughs> the moment you feel very secure, it suddenly it completely collapse. <laughs> but if things are not going so well, yeah, you have some yeah, politicking with your colleague. Okay. Then of course people will say, no, I never politic with them, they politic with me. Politic is always like that. We always feel people politic with us. <laughs> you know? Now, then we feel like ah this place is not good. Then we want to move. Ajahn Chah, when he was uh, much younger, I mean he, he's gone already, uh, but I write in his bio. There was a place he moved there, and then there were rumors and accusations against him. Then his students who supported him uh, talked to him and said, ah, you know, Venerable, these people don't appreciate what you are doing. Uh, my son will leave this place. Then he said, no, 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 we stay, we stay. So the, the students, being students, but teacher say, stay, okay, stay. So stay, 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 stay. Then eventually, people realized these are just rumors, not true. So then uh, they start to appreciate what he was doing and he became very popular and everybody you know, uh, support him and so on. Then one day he told his son, okay, now it's time to go. <laughs> then, then the student is like, at a point in time, so, so Jelai, you don't want to go. Now everything is okay, now you want to go. Then he said, yeah, precisely, now, now okay already, then we, we tell you it's okay to go. <laughs> I, I learned something very valuable from reading that. Yeah. It also tells us that many times we tend to want to move when things are not well. If things are good, then we want to stay, you know? Yeah. 
and it boils down to our defilements. Pleasant, agreeable experiences, then we want more of it. We want it to prolong. Disagreeable, unpleasant experiences, then we are averse to it. We want it to end. Uh, it boils down to this. Very simple. Yeah. So, stay or the both. Yuan xiao san zhang zu fan lao. Yuan xiao san zhang zu fan lao. Yuan de zhi hui zheng ming liao. Yuan de zhi hui zheng ming liao. 不愿罪障悉消除，不愿罪障悉消除，世世常行菩萨道，世世常行菩萨道。阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀。Here we meet again, maybe guided and protected by the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And let's do it. Quiet, quiet. Have a non-attached day ahead. Oh yeah, yes, sir. Yesterday, did I give you all exercises? No, huh? So, <clears throat> yeah. So th this week's exercise, uh, try to see whether you can catch your attachment. <laughs> uh, very tricky, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Huh? Try to see whether you can catch your attachment. All right. Have a non-attachment day ahead. Take care. Bye. Stay safe. Bye bye, Sifu. Thank you, Sifu. Thank you. Bye, Mama. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Thank you, Sifu. Bye bye. Okay.